one of us is where we are today because of the choices we made before today. So if you want something different in your life, just make different choices. Force yourself to step out of that comfort zone. Challenge yourself to discover new paths. Now, most people think of me as an author because, yes, I've written a few books. <laughs> and I'm very proud of them. But they're my, my tool. I actually am an entrepreneur. I love to build businesses, and I love to help other people build businesses and create success in their life. Now, my last book was called Think and Grow Rich for Women, and it gave me the opportunity to get into the minds of more than 300 successful women. I learned their goals, their ambitions, and I think more importantly, their fears. It gave me the opportunity to understand that sometimes, as women, we're our own worst enemy, not having that self-confidence and that drive that we have, need to succeed. Now, how many of you have been concerned about work-life balance? Let me see. Raise them high. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> because when you worry about work-life balance, you're wasting precious time today about stuff that happened yesterday. So just stop it. Instead, realize that you have one big life, one big life that includes your spiritual life, your business, your family, your social life, and all of those things come together. And so if you wake up and you realize that you didn't spend enough time with your children yesterday, don't fret about it. Just make a decision to do something different today and strive to have one big life. A few years ago, I found a definition that helped me really understand um, and change the way that I face my worry. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. <laughs> so when we're thinking negative thoughts, we get smaller, we close down, we go into a fetal position. We don't want to do that because you attract negative results. So when I catch myself today in a, one of my, because I still worry, but I stop and I go, okay, Sharon, wait. Instead of focusing on what I don't want, I reframe my brain and focus on what I do want to have happen. And it's magic. So please use it because it can help you. Instead of being depressed and worried, you become open to the possibility open to what life has waiting for you. Many times that opportunity has been right by you and you just didn't recognize it because you were framing. You cannot hold negative and positive in your brain at the same time. Instead of work-life balance, I challenge you to think about work-life fulfillment. Are you living a life that you can be proud of? As a little girl, my father used to put me at bed, at, to bed at night and say, Sharon, have you added value to someone's life today? I lost him in 2006, but I still ask myself that every night. Have I added value to someone's life? That is work-life fulfillment. And that is a goal worth striving for because you're not only adding value to your own life, you're making the world a better place. Now, in my book, Three Feet from Gold, I share a personal success equation, and I challenge you guys to think about how this applies in your life. You start by combining your passion and your talent. Now, my passion actually came from anger. Usually they tell you to do what you love, love what you do. Well, mine came from anger. I was mad that we weren't teaching our kids about money. And I felt that it was really a Travis, you know, it's a, it's a life skill. We need to teach our kids. And then my talent was I became an accountant. I had years of publishing experience. But most of us stop there. We have our passion and our talent, and we think we have to do it all by ourselves. And that's why your business stays small. If you truly want to make an impact on the world, you have to find the right associations. That power of association helps you speed your way to success. But you also have to take action. You know, sometimes you know what you're supposed to do. You just don't do it. Anybody feel a little guilty? You know? Yeah, sometimes we just don't do it. And in order for us to create the results we deserve, you need to take that action. But you also have to have faith in yourself. Faith in what you're doing, that it's needed and necessary. Faith that it really will propel you forward. 
and faith that it really is something that you are destined to accomplish. Now, successful businesses really do one of two things, solve a problem or serve a need. It's that simple. And that's what gets you through the difficult times. When you have a down day, you remind yourself the value you're adding to the world. When you get up in the morning, you remind yourself in gratitude what you're doing to add value to other people's lives. It truly does help you get through those difficult, difficult days. My mantra is why not? Why not get out of your comfort zone? I started my career as an accountant and was a fast track CPA firm in Atlanta because I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I grew up in a very entrepreneurial house. I lived between my mother's beauty shop and my father's used car lot. And we had rental homes and we owned orange groves. I hated it. I had to go scrub out the toilets in between <laughs> tenants. I swore I'd never be an entrepreneur. I was gonna be a career woman. I was gonna be a partner. I was gonna retire. At 25, and many of you aren't there yet, but you know at 25, you know everything, right? We do, we're just experts. Um, I realized I'm working way too hard for somebody else. If I'm gonna work this hard, I should be working for myself. And that's when I basically committed the rest of my life to entrepreneurship and finding things that would help me in my work life fulfillment. Fast forward a few years, I did a woman's magazine and then my kids didn't like to read, their friends didn't like to read. So I met the inventor of the first talking book. Many of you probably remember these. 1987, they didn't exist. We started the company and we said, how can we get parents to trust us? So we partnered with little companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, <laughs> Sesame Street, because we knew parents trusted them. And so allowed us to explode and go global. In our fourth year on track for 52 million in sales, we sold the company. And then we moved to Arizona, met Al, and my kids were older. And I said, you know, we really need to do something about teaching people about money. So I met a partner and we wrote a little book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it started a 10 year partnership. We did 15 books together. And then we built this around the globe, 100 countries, over 50 languages. And again, I said, you know, we need to continue to look for big partners. How can we spread our message in the largest and quickest way? And so we partnered with people like Time Life, American Express, allowed us to really get that validation and be able to get our message and build it around the globe very quickly. At the height of our success, we had 5,000 people working for us, but only 15 to 17 on our payroll because there are other companies working with us, looking to us like I used to work and look at Disney. That's when you play big, to find those partners that can help you make the greatest impact. Now, in 2007, after 10 years of having the greatest relationship and great success, my partner and I were no longer aligned. So at the age of 53, which is very young, by the way, for some of you in here that aren't there yet. Yeah, because it was a long time ago. At 53, I made that decision. I thought my legacy was Rich Dad. I figured that was it. And all of a sudden I said, you know, I can't stay here. I don't agree with, you know, the direction he wanted to go in the company. So I made a decision to leave. And it's tough. Sometimes you have to close a door in your life so that other doors of opportunity will open. And I challenge you to think about your life. Is there something that you are holding on to because it's comfortable, but not the right thing for you? It's not your destiny. You're afraid to take that step outside your comfort zone. A few months later, I got a phone call from President Bush asking me to be on the very first President's Advisory Council of Financial Literacy. I served President Bush and President Obama. I wouldn't have gotten that call had I still been a rich dad. A couple of months later, I got a call from the Napoleon Hill Foundation, author of Think and Grow Rich. Incredible book, still the top number one book in personal development. If you haven't read it, please do. We know what was happening in the economy in 2008. Remember that painful time? They wanted to reinvigorate and they asked me to step in. I would not have gotten that phone call had I still been a rich dad. So again, I challenge each of you. 
Is there something that isn't working in your life? Something that you need to close the door to make space and room for other doors to fly open for you? Because it did for me and it will for you. Now, we were playing big again with Napoleon Hill and certainly with the President's Advisory Council, you know, but sometimes things happen that stop you in your tracks. Any of you have that happen? Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I thought walking away from Rich Dad was the biggest obstacle I'd ever had in my life. It was very difficult. But in December of 2012, I lost my youngest son. Everything changes. You're not supposed to outlive your kids. You need to focus on what's important in your life. Things that used to cause me pain, no big deal anymore. And so I was still busy, very successful, but I was in autopilot, coasting, in neutral. Any of you been there? Autopilot. And about a year ago, I'm you know, thinking, well, I'm not playing big. I'm, I'm being reactive instead of proactive. That's not me. I'm playing small. Now, I'm not getting energized. I'm not getting excited about what I'm doing. And so I actually thought maybe I should retire. Maybe I'm too old to start something new. And I said, well, I got a little pushback from my family and my friends and my fans. A lot of pushback. And I actually think I heard from him saying, get over it, Mom. You have more to do. <laughs> Just like each of you, you have more to do. So earlier this year, I launched a new movement called the Play Big Movement. For me, it's playing big again. And what I want to do is I'm sharing what I'm doing so other people can do it along with me. Because each and every one of you has the opportunity and the right to be on the stage telling your story, to be able to share your success. But when it comes to women in business, we're doing great things. You know, we are, women have, we have 11 million businesses that are adding $2 trillion to our economy. Unfortunately, less than 2% of women-owned businesses make over a million dollars. And that's my mission, is to triple, quadruple, and then 10x that number, so that women business owners can truly get the results that they deserve. And you do that by understanding your own personal success equation, what you need to do to be able to find those right associations. And as women, we already own 60% of all personal wealth in the United States. Woo! We have incredible businesses, but with that, we have a responsibility. 90% of us will be solely responsible for our financial lives at some point. It's due to death, divorce, um, the good news is we outlive our husbands by seven years. <laughs> the bad news is we outlive our husband by seven years, right? So we have a responsibility. We need to educate ourselves. We need to understand not only how to hold that 60% of wealth, but how to invest it and make it grow for generational wealth. And what stops us? Well, you know, we have that little devil in our ear that says, uh, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not an expert. These guys, they have no problem saying, I'm an expert, right? I'm an expert. <laughs> Women, you know, I'm kind of, I'm pretty good at it. Also, you know, easy for her to say. I bet a few of you in there are thinking, you know, about me like that. Easy for her to say. I started with nothing. Lots of ups and downs. And then my favorite, you're too old. You're too old. Well, I love this study because it says our maximum brain capacity is in our 50s. I like that number. But I like even more the fact that it stays with us until we're in our 90s. So what gets in our way? Lack of focus, lack of clarity, lack of motivation, passion. Usually that means we're not on the right track. We're not doing what we're meant to do. Wrong associations is a big one. People in your life holding you back instead of people pushing you forward. Having that right mentor, you've heard about that today, mentor that's going to open the door for you, introduce you new paths, 
having the right people on your team that are doing the things you shouldn't be doing. You should be focusing on your strengths and hiring your weaknesses so that you can have the greatest contribution and the greatest success. And then fear, the fear of criticism, big one today, fear of failure. But you know, a lot of times it's fear of success, fear of success. We don't, we don't know what to do with it. We could, we want to step back out of the limelight and then lack of self-confidence. That's something that is huge, particularly for women. We don't stand in our own power. I want you to stand in your own power. So I want you to review your personal success equation. Ask yourself what you can do to change your trajectory for success. What association do you need to play big? Because a play big movement is about being number one in your field, living your legacy. You create your legacy with every heart you touch every day and then creating maximum impact.